This is the Crowd Crux Crowdfunding Podcast with With Sal Sal Brigman, Brigman. where we cover everything you need to know to To launch a successful crowdfunding campaign. campaign. We speak with proven entrepreneurs who've raised money from the crowd and want to teach you how to do the same. Stay tuned because we're about to reveal how to launch your dream project with your host, Sal Brigman. Before we get started with this podcast episode, I want to take a second to introduce you to my friends at FulfillRight. If you need help shipping out your Kickstarter or Indiegogo perks or rewards, FulfillRight is the absolute best company for you. I've been working with them for a while and I can vouch for their services. They make it dead simple and take all of the headache out of shipping out all of those boxes, all of those orders to your backers and your customers. If you want to check them out, go to fulfillright.com at F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com. What up, crowdfunders? Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. On this show, we talk about how to raise money successfully with a crowdfunding campaign. Now, that could be you if you're a startup entrepreneur in the audience, if you create your own gadget or gizmo, but it's also you if you're looking to create a new web app, you're looking to create a new phone application, a new uh, iPhone or an Android application. And we talk about a lot of different types of funding, particularly when it comes to entrepreneurship, starting your own business, and obviously other forms when it comes to like filmmaking when it comes to raising money for publishing projects so i invite you guys to dive into the archives of this show check out some of the other interviews i've conducted because there are a lot of them a lot of really successful people who have raised six and seven figures on kickstarter and they're sharing with you exactly what they're doing to actually get traffic to get funding etc and sort of in this vein of education i wanted to expose you to a completely new platform that not many people know about is a crowdfunding website that actually is in the vein of equity crowdfunding. So I put out another podcast episode recently where I talked about equity crowdfunding, the implications there, and how people are raising literally millions of dollars with regulation crowdfunding. This is a whole new regu- regulation that is part of the Jobs Act. So sort of historically, there's regulation A+, there's regulation D, and there's also regulation crowdfunding. And these are different ways that you can basically do a Kickstarter for equity campaign. So with Kickstarter, you know, you raise money and you give away rewards, you ship out these rewards to your backers, and they're able to give you a little bit of feedback on the product that you created. With equity crowdfunding, rather than just getting donations or sort of pre-orders, if you will, you can actually gain shares in a company when you invest in an equity crowdfunding campaign. So you're basically offering this as, hey, do you guys want to, number one, buy into the vision? Are you interested in this? But also you'll become a shareholder in my company if if this campaign goes successfully. So that's sort of the bedrock of an equity crowdfunding campaign. And today I talked with a team member at WeFunder. So WeFunder is the top regulation crowdfunding platform out there right now. Um, They're sort of battling it out with Start Engine and some of the other platforms out there. But I talked about them a lot in my book, Equity Crowdfunding Explained. And basically on today, you're going to hear number one, how you can actually use equity crowdfunding to raise money for your company. Number two, what are the legal ramifications here? Like, what do you have to know if you actually want to do this? And also, who can you offer this to? One of the cool things about regulation crowdfunding is actually you can offer this to non-accredited investors. So ordinary people, just like you and me, people who do not have a massive net worth, you can offer them to invest in your company nowadays. It actually doesn't really cost very much at all. So you're going to hear about that as well as the way that WeFunder has built up their marketplace so that it's very similar to Kickstarter. So with Kickstarter, Kickstarter is a marketplace. And when I say that, what I mean is when you launch into Kickstarter, you're also gaining access to this regular group of super backers and people that are regularly backing campaigns. The same thing can be said of WeFunder that there are actually investors. They have a massive email list. They have lots of social clout there. And the company WeFunder, the actual platform that you launch on, they will help broadcast your campaign 
to their investors, to their network of investors. And in that way, you can get funding for your startup company, uh, for, your, for your new web app, for your new um, iPhone or Android application. It's really, really cool. And of course, you also have to do a little bit of marketing there up front. So you're going to learn all about equity crowdfunding. But guys, if you are at all interested in maybe exploring this as a solution for your company, you not only want to offer um, you know, maybe some cool perks or rewards, but you also want investors, investors who can become evangelists for your company. I invite you dive into my new book, Equity Crowdfunding Explained. This is a killer no brainer when it comes to entering this industry. Like I've literally done all of the work for you. I've outlaid all the different regulations. I've shown you exactly how to do one of these financial raises, how to do it simply and with a low budget. And in addition, what you have to do if you want to drive attention and traffic and you really want to soar past your fundraising goal. I catalog all of this for you as well as going through some of the major equity crowdfunding platforms in the United States as well as, well as one or two abroad that you could use if you're outside of the United States. So if that sounds interesting to you, number one, go and check out this link crowdcrux.com slash equity. That is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash equity. And when you go there, not only do I have a digital version, you know, an ebook, um, also a paperback version if you want to read it that way and take notes, sort of. I love to actually take notes in the margin of my books. Um, but I also have an audible version for you. So for those of you that are traveling in a car right now, maybe you're on the subway, maybe you're, you're on the way to work and you're listening to this podcast, you could also at the same time be downloading this information into your brain with an audible book. I put a lot of work into reading this passionately. I know that I know that finance is not the most exciting subject out there. So I try to really spice it up for you. I try to bring my passion when I'm, when I'm reading this audible book. So you can also pick up a copy of that at this link, crowdcrux.com slash equity. Without further ado, let's get into today's podcast episode. Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. I have Johnny here, the Director of Business Development at WeFunder. And WeFunder is a really cool equity crowdfunding website. You might have heard of it. I covered it a lot in my last book, uh, Equity Crowdfunding Explained. We're going to get into how you can use equity crowdfunding yourself as an entrepreneur and also some of the requirements there that go with uh, one of these different crowdfunding campaigns. So Johnny, welcome on the show. Thanks so much, Sal. Good to be here. So, Johnny, um, you just started working at WeFunder, is that right? Yeah, I joined the team about five or six months ago. What, what was like your concept of equity crowdfunding before you even heard of WeFunder? Like, did you know about crowdfunding? Um, is this sort of a new term for you? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I actually have been working in the crowdfunding space for a while now. Um, I'm from the UK originally, as you can probably tell by my accent. Um, started my career in strategy consulting. Um, but in 2009, I went to volunteer at a nonprofit called Kiva. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a year later, um, went back there full time to start um, a pilot program at Kiva at the time that we called Kiva Zip. Um, and this later became uh, Kiva US. You had someone uh, from the team on the show a few weeks back, which I listened I did, to. Yeah. Awesome, awesome interviews, though. Um, and so Kiva US was focused on microloans, crowdfunding microloans for entrepreneurs throughout the country. Um, we've now made uh, 5,000 loans, $25 million in every state in the country. Incredible. And so, and so. Those loans are all zero interest, no fees. And so that was my introduction to, to crowdfunding. Um, okay. So I, I led that team for six and a half years or so. Um, and then at the start of this year, um, left Kiva um, and so transitioned over WeFunder. And for me, um, it's kind of a graduation. Kiva is very small microloans up to 10K. At WeFunder, we do um, equity or debt investments in startups um, up to 1.07 million. Um, so it's it's significantly larger sums of money. Mm. Um, and so j for me personally, it felt like a step up and a graduation. And I think for a lot of our entrepreneurs as well, we've had several Kiva entrepreneurs now who started with um, $10,000 loan and are now raising much larger sums of money on WeFunder. Yeah, Kiva is incredible. I mean, what what they're doing there, the team, um, all the work with that with that website, the nonprofit, just incredible to me. And it's also, I think, transforming the way that 
um, sort of social entrepreneurship slash giving is done. It's really neat to me. Um, yeah, I urge yeah. you guys, if you haven't yet, go and check out and listen to that, to that episode on Kiva. It was really interesting and enlightening. So when it comes to, to equity crowdfunding, though, so this is something that um, I think is not really on most people's radars. It's not really mainstream in any kind of way. How hmm. do you describe it to people that are just hearing it for the first time? Like, what, what the heck is this equity crowdfunding thing? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think you could maybe um, go in a couple of directions. One would be to say it's like Kickstarter for investing. And for your audience who are you know, used to Indiegogo, Kickstarter, kind of perks-based crowdfunding um, opportunities, um, what we fund there is and, and other equity crowdfunding platforms is a chance to um, crowdfund companies, but you're not buying a perk or donating um, to that company. You're investing in that company. Um, you're either making a loan to them, uh, so uh, we do debt, um, or you're buying shares in the company. Um, so you're investing equity in that company. And you gave a really cool example um, on the show a couple of weeks back. You talk about this in your book as well of Oculus Rift. They raised a couple of million dollars uh, on Kickstarter, I think it was. But then they went on to be acquired uh, for Facebook for like a thousand times that. And um, with equity crowdfunding, as you say, um, investors in Oculus Rift could have bought shares in the company and then in that instance, uh, made money when that company was acquired um, for, for multiple times what they invested in. So one way of looking at it, I think, is it's like Kickstarter for investing. And another way of approaching um, how to, how to uh, think about it for someone that's not familiar with the space, it's like the stock market for private companies. So in the stock market, anyone can invest in the shares of a Google or an Amazon, um, and that share price then goes up and down. Um, with WeFunder, you can invest in the shares of an early stage startup. Um, so it's like stock market investing for much earlier stage, um, smaller companies. And I should say as well, in case there's any lawyers listening, that it's very, very risky, right? So uh, when you invest in a Google, um, a couple of things. Firstly, that's a very uh, kind of stable investment. There's not much chance that Google is going to go bankrupt next year. We hope um, not. But we hope not. Uh, but secondly, it's also quite a liquid investment. So you can resell shares on the stock market very easily. When you invest in equity uh, in a startup on WeFunder, firstly, it's it's an early stage company. A lot of early stage startups fail, as you know. So it's risky. Um, but also, it's it's not possible easily to resell um, those see. shares. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's a much less liquid asset. Is it the same with Kickstarter where you have to not you're not only giving away shares of your company, are you also giving away a prototype? Are you giving away a product? Like are there mm. reward tiers in that same way? Yeah, so we allow issuers, founders, um, the companies that are raising money with us, we allow them to offer perks to their investors. And many do, um, but it's certainly um, not required. Um, and I think it's for obviously on Kickstarter, that's the reason a backer is backing a project to get the perk. Um, with WeFunder, the reason investors are investing for the most part is because they hope to make a financial return. Um, and they've looked at the numbers, they've read the story, they've kind of evaluated the founder on LinkedIn. We have a ton of great information on the company on our website. And so an investor's looked at that and they've said, yeah, this is a good investment opportunity. I think I can make money. Mm. So the perks are kind of secondary on WeFunder. Th I that see. being said, I, yeah, one, one side note on that. For me, I've been thinking about this recently. Um, we have one, one company um, that's currently raising with us, YOLO Rum, uh, and they have an investor party that's coming up. And, and that did make me think that even though the, the primary motivation for investors is to make money, I think being a, an angel investor is really cool. Like you get to um, kind of have a front row seat. You get to come in, um, you know, at, at the ground level in a company that you're excited about. And we really encourage people to only invest in companies that, that they're really excited about and passionate about. So you get to, um, you know, buy a, buy a front row seat for this company. You get to maybe strike up a relationship with this founder. Um, you get to kind of be, be um, the first to hear about cool um, developments with the company. Yeah. You get kind of connections. And in this instance, you might get um, an invite to the investor party. And so I do think like 
being an angel investor in a company is really, really cool. Yeah, there are a lot, of, lot of different benefits that go along with that. And it's pretty clear. I mean, yeah. looking here, you've had over 200, uh, over 200 startups raised more than $60 million on WeFunder, a lot under regulation right. crowdfunding, um, probably much mm. focused mostly on regulation crowdfunding in this episode. That's you also right. have regulation D, regulation A+. So are people, all these investors, basically, you go on WeFunder, are there already people, is there a community of people regularly backing campaigns? Do you, is it that mm. the, the founder is marketing and that's bringing most of the investment? Like, where is the investment coming from? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's a bit of both. As with all crowdfunding, as a founder, you need to um, seed the momentum. You need to get the ball rolling. You need to go to your network, both personal contacts, reaching out to them individually to invest, and then mass blast to email lists, social media, et cetera, and then managing your investors throughout the campaign, getting PR, et cetera. So um, certainly a lot of it is coming from the founder. And we see about half right now coming from the founder's own outreach. And then we see about half coming from WeFunders' um, network of investors. Uh, mm. And we have now probably about 170,000 people on our email list, probably about 50,000 of them have made an investment, and probably about 10,000 of them are accredited investors um, who tend to write larger checks. But the average the average investor on WeFunder invests about $1,000. Um, and as you said, the average company raises 300 to 350k from about 350 investors. Um, so, you know, to, to my point earlier, it's Kickstarter for investing. One of the differences between Kickstarter and WeFunder for a founder is that typically the average project um, will raise a, a lot more on WeFunder than on Kickstarter. Yeah. Is that true also? I mean, Kickstarter is really notorious, I think, for a low success percentage. Do you have any data in that way on the, the percentage that are successful on your platform? Yeah, we've seen about 70% to date. Um, so once a company launches and it's, it's, you know, it's not, um, it's not like fill in an application and you're up on the site the next day. There's, there's legal requirements to launch a regulation crowdfunding campaign. You need to file what's called a form C with the SEC. You need to file, um, gap financials for the last two years. Or if you're, if you're newer than two years, then you need to go back to the incorporation date of the company. But if you're raising more than 107,000, you need to get an independent CPA to review those financials. So it, it's quite a serious undertaking. Um, and so it, it might take a month um, to launch the campaign. What kind of costs do you think go into that when it comes to doing a campaign that's over $107,000 um, yeah. in terms of like legal costs, all that? Yeah, so one of the great things about WeFunder is that we don't charge any fees to um, launch a campaign. Um, we also do a compliance check for companies. So if you use our standard template contract, which the vast majority of our founders do, um, then you can launch a campaign on WeFunder with no financial costs. Um, to your point, if you're raising more than $107,000, then you need those gap financials to be reviewed by an independent CPA. And unless you happen to magically already have that, which hardly anyone does, um, then that's going to cost you. And that's the one cost that you'll typically incur. Um, and depending on the complexity of the finances of the business, um, how long it's been in operation, et cetera, that will probably come in from between one to $3,000. Okay, so that's mainly there. And then assuming they use the templates, the legal templates that you guys have, that sort of takes the cost there if they were to hire a lawyer to help with that. Um, that would it, cost them more, yeah. When, when it comes to campaigns that are under $107,000, what are the costs that go into that? So very little. Um, you do still need gap financials, but they don't need to be reviewed by an independent CPA. Um, like I mentioned, there's no costs on the WeFunder side. Um, it takes time, obviously, to, to fill in the application and get the campaign page um, ready. Um, but there's very, very little cost to launching. I had to interrupt this podcast episode because I want to introduce you to my friends at The Gadget Flow. Their product discovery platform reaches 22 million people per month. They've helped more than 5,000 crowdfunding campaigns thus far and they have a social media following of more than 700,000 followers. If you want to gain access to their marketplace and list your own product, you can go to thegadgetflow.com slash submit and list your project today. 
Okay, so it, it almost sounds to me like I think that um, you know campaigns that are doing over a hundred thousand dollars. That's kind of a uh, man. That's a, that's a barrier. That's something that you have to overcome. And I think that's that's one of those things aside from other limitations on how much you can raise, which you can get into. Um, that's making equity crowdfunding not as quickly pick up, picked up as it was for Kickstarter and Indiegogo. But for under a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred seven thousand dollars, it seems like that's kind of like a sweet spot. Like you really can launch without very much cost at all and you can try out this equity crowdfunding thing yeah i think the only thing i'd say on that is you know as, as with any crowdfunding campaign it does take time and it does take effort um now the good thing is just as with kickstarter or indiegogo um you know it's marketing as well as raising capital so there's that that additional marketing benefit for you launching on we fund both marketing to your own community getting your fans engaged as investors in the business um but also then marketing to the we funder community um so so you're raising money you're raising awareness but it is it is effort and it's going to take um take effort to to launch a campaign get attention um, get it yeah get everything together and then to run the campaign you probably know better than most how much effort it is and so if you're putting all that effort in to raise 50k you know that's the roi there is a little bit more challenging if if you can raise 200 300k um then then it kind of the roi starts to improve Okay. I see. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. When it comes to the types of projects, because on Kickstarter, you know, I think that hardware, design, gaming, tabletops, it's really clear the types of products that do really well on Kickstarter. When it comes to equity crowdfunding, what are you seeing in the way of the types of companies that are really taking to this very well or the types of mm. um, products that are really resonating really well with the community? Yeah, that's a great question. I'll, I'll maybe try and answer it in three ways. The first is to say, looking at sector. Um, and there, there's a really interesting range, actually. So some of the best companies we have are tech companies. Um, there's a cryptocurrency um, company that's fundraising right now, for example. Um, and we've seen um, you know, a, another cryptocurrency balance raised a million dollars with us. Um, a social um, network called Minds raised a million dollars with us. So tech companies um, does do very well, for sure. Um, but then on the other end of the spectrum, um, you have breweries and distilleries. Uh, and breweries have a, an army of um, customers that, that love them. Um, and so Hopsters in Boston, um, which have this awesome um, brew your own craft beer experience, they raised a million dollars with us to open a second location. Hops and Grain in Texas raised a million dollars on a revenue shared debt deal. Um, so, you know, we've had tech companies raise a ton of money and we've had breweries and, and distilleries um, raise a lot of money too. And we've had restaurants and food um, CPG companies and, and hardware companies. Uh, there's a company right now that's putting the first um, commercial Wi-Fi in space um, up on WeFunder. So, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it really does run the gamut. Mm -hmm. the, the second way I'd answer your question of what types of companies work best on WeFunder would be to say companies that people love. So the most successful raise in regulation crowdfunding history in America, as far as I'm aware, in terms of um, the most amount of money raised in a short short period of time was Meow Wolf that raised a million dollars on WeFunder in just two days. Um, they had, they're, they're like an immersive art experience, kind of like a theme park meets art gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. They had 270,000 Facebook likes and they just had this community of people that loved them. If you go to Santa Fe, everyone says you've got to go to meow wolf people just love it and so as soon as they went live their fans just swarmed in and loved the chance to not just you know be a part of the meow wolf community on social media or as a, as a fan but also now be an investor in the company so companies that have a, 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 a customer following. base yeah that are following love them are obviously going to do better and then the third thing i'd say and this is a big part of the reason i work at WeFunder. Like I come from a nonprofit background at Kiva. I'm really excited about the power of crowdfunding in democratizing investment decisions to get more capital flowing to women entrepreneurs who right now get a shame, shamefully low percentage of venture capital or early stage investment capital to get more capital flowing to African-American entrepreneurs, Hispanic entrepreneurs. And so honestly, I think we definitely over-index versus conventional venture 
capital or angel investing in terms of the percentage of our investments that are going to entrepreneurs of color that are going to women. Um, and that's certainly um, something that's really exciting for me. Yeah, that's one of, definitely one of the nice things when you have a VC, you really have a gatekeeper. Even when you have other people that are intermediaries, you have a gatekeeper. And unfortunately, mm. sometimes those gatekeepers, they are narrow-sighted or for whatever reason, they don't connect with your idea. When you bring it to the crowd, you're actually able yeah. to get a bunch of people's input and people that are really enthusiastic that can actually invest in your company. So it's sort of going direct to the crowd in that way. You also, you mentioned debt um, as, as something that mm. entrepreneurs are offering. Well, what did you mean by that? Can you expand on that? Yeah, so um, I'd say about three quarters of the uh, investment volume on WeFunder to date has been in equity. So you're buying shares or future shares with a convertible note or a safe contract, but you're buying, as an investor, you're, you're buying equity in the company. But a quarter of our deals have been debt. Um, so as an investor, you're lending money to this company and they're going to pay you back with an interest rate over time. Um, and there's a couple of ways we do debt. One is like a simple loan with a standard interest rate, like maybe a 15% interest rate. Um, and the other is what's called a revenue share. So on the revenue share structure, um, as an entrepreneur, you're paying investors back as a percentage of the revenues of your business. So you might borrow um, half a million dollars and you say, I'm going to pay investors back 1.5x that, say 750k over time, 5% of my revenues month by month or quarter by quarter until eventually I've paid off that 750k loan. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of like an agreement or an offering that you're making upfront and is that then like part of the campaign or does that go to like the amount that you're raising or yeah that's the campaign you know a company might borrow five hundred thousand dollars from a bank and then they pay they pay the the interest on that loan to the bank and the bank would be making money off that loan and now with WeFunder, that company can borrow five hundred thousand dollars from a thousand people lending five hundred dollars each and rather than paying the interest rate to the bank they're going to be paying the interest rate to their customers and to their fans and to their friends and family. Very neat. Very neat. I like, I like that idea too. It's, it's sort of like combining like lending club with equity crowdfunding with startups. Yes. It's a really interesting idea. It's, it's similar to lending club. And, and actually when Prosper launched, um, Prosper and lending club were some of the earliest pioneers of P2P lending back in the mid two thousands. When Prosper launched, uh, they had photos of the entrepreneurs on the site and people could come together. And it, it kind of felt like we fund the fields today in a sense. There was that genuine connection between the lender and the borrower. Um, on Lending Club and Prosper and P2P sites right now, the exception being Kiva, but most P2P lending platforms, you've lost that connection. Like the lender doesn't know who they're lending to. They don't know the name of that business or what, what they're doing. And with WeFunder, we're kind of re reintroducing that personal connection and that human relationship between the lender and the borrower. But yeah, similar in concept to a lending club or a prosper. Yeah, that, that's definitely one of the things that I, man, like it's changed over time. Lending club and prosper, like when they started out, they had a really right. different vision, I think. And um, naturally, you know, going public and having investors and stuff, I think they just, mm -hmm. they've changed over time, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, I, I love that vision. Also, the, just the idea that you can participate with these entrepreneurs and sort of see and help them and, and see their story unfold. That's always just really interesting to me. I'm speaking to the crowdfunders in the audience who have already launched a Kickstarter campaign or have actually even successfully run a campaign. And the reason is, I think you will understand this pain point most. And that is, when you finally do raise money on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, the hardest part is not collecting the cash. The hardest part is shipping out all of those perks and rewards to your backers. It is a nightmare, my friends. It's a lot of spreadsheets, it's a lot of headache, and it's a lot of stress. That's why I recommend BackerKit. If you have not heard of BackerKit, they help you collect surveys, they help you collect data, and the entire fulfillment process is just so much easier and so many less spreadsheets when you use their software. You can check them out at backerkit.com and use CrowdCrux for a special discount. When it comes yeah. to the platform, you've been talking a lot about the low costs, um, not having to have any costs in order to launch a campaign. What are what are the fees here when it comes to doing one mm -hmm. of these these raises on your platform if, if it is successful? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So like I mentioned, we don't charge any fees to launch the campaign, but um, we're a for-profit company, so we've got to make money. Um, we're actually a public benefit corporation, and we just became a B Corp. Um, that's actually a scoop because uh, <laughs> it's not public knowledge yet. But uh, nice. awesome. yeah, we just became a B Corp, which we're stoked about. But we're a for-profit company, so we want to make money. And the way that we do that is we charge a fee. If and only if you're successful as a founder raising money on WeFunder, and that fee is seven percent, five percent in cash, and then two percent as an investment. And what I mean by that is, let's say you raise a million bucks on WeFunder, we keep five percent, fifty k in cash ourselves, and we send you nine fifty k, and then two uh, percent, so twenty thousand dollars of the million, uh, we invest in that. So if you've raised uh, a convertible note round on WeFunder for a million bucks, then we invest. $20,000 in the convertible note. If you've raised a million dollars of debt through a revenue share, then we essentially, part of our fee is that we make a $20,000 loan to you and you need to pay us back that loan on the same terms as you're paying back the other investors. And I like I like that last 2% because it kind of aligns our interests in the long term um, with the interests of our founders. Uh, so I, I think it's a, a better way to charge fees than, than cash, to be honest. Okay, so if, if I raise, let's just say, a million dollars, so 2% of that is going to be allocated to WeFunder. So you guys basically are then invest. It's like an option to invest. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, we're investing investing $20,000, say 2%, whether that be in equity or debt. And do you have to claim that option, or is that just is that something where every single company are going to do that automatically? Yeah, exactly. Okay, I see how it works. Cool. It, so then you're actually you would you be then raising more like if you if you are you raise the max you know a um, million dollars and then WeFunder also has the ability to put in 20k like how does that affect that you know what I'm saying yeah so so you let's say you raise a million dollars of equity um, then we don't send you a million dollars of cash we send you nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash and keep fifty k for ourselves. Um, but then essentially you've given away 1.02 million of equity um, because you've also given WeFunder $20,000 worth of equity. So essentially see, you've okay. given away 1.02 million of equity and you've, you've, you've kind of re you've got $950,000 deposit, deposited in your bank account. Okay. Yeah. I was curious because under the rules, you can obviously, there's a cap on the amount that you can raise there. So I was wondering what would happen right. if it went over the cap in that way. Yeah, that's a great question. So, and you mentioned Reg A plus earlier. With Regulation A plus, you can raise up to fifty million, um, which sounds great. The requirements to launch a Regulation A plus campaign are very, very stringent. Um, people refer to it as a mini IPO. Um, it's it's kind of the financial reporting requirements are, are very onerous. So, for an early stage company, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and then you have Regulation crowdfunding. The legal limit for what you can raise with a regulation crowdfunding campaign is 1.07 million. Um, and so that's why I talk about million. To keep things simple, I often just say we can raise 50K to a million on WeFunder. Technically, it's 1.07 million. But what we can do, you'll see some companies on the site that have raised 1.4, 1.5 million. So what we do is if you have accredited investors in your 1.07 million, we can take them out and roll them over into a regulation D round, which is for accredited investors on top of the 1.07. And then we backfill um, their funding amount with additional volume from unaccredited investors. Interesting. So that's why you've, you've seen some companies that raise 1.5. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, that's definitely clever. Um, well, yeah, that, this gives me a lot of good information to, to get started here and just understanding how the operations work, um, the fees that you guys charge, all this kind of stuff. This has been a lot of great uh, information here. Um, also, when it comes to doing one of these raises, I think, like mm. you said, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it, um, a lot of understanding how these new rules work and also how to do a, an yeah. equity crowdfunding campaign. While we have you here, um, do you have any thoughts on – uh, the, the actual goal that you're setting like and, and the amount that you should raise, how is it that entrepreneurs should should forecast that? Because obviously everyone would be like, hey, I want to raise a million dollars. You know, that sounds awesome. Um, mm. Do you have any thoughts on that or even just say uh, also um, the valuation of your company? Like those are two really big questions that I would have as an entrepreneur. Yeah, the, there's a barrage of great questions here, Sal. Uh, you got me thinking hard. So on, on the first question, I think 
you actually kind of need to flip it, right? It's like, in one sense, you only want to raise the money on WeFunder um, that you need to raise because you're giving away equity in your company, right? So if you believe in the growth of your company, and if you don't believe in the growth of your company, then we don't want you on WeFunder. But if you believe in the growth of your company, and that that's you know going to be a great success. Maybe it's going to be acquired one day, or even IPO in your wildest dreams. Then you know the last thing you want to do is give away more equity. So actually, um, you, you kind of you only want to raise the amount of money that that you need to. And from a debt perspective, you know you're you're paying an interest rate to investors to borrow this money. And so again, you only you only want to borrow the money uh, on WeFunder that you um, that you need to. Um, now. So, so that would be just a, a slight yeah. caveat on, on that point. Um, to your second question on how do you um, value a company, that's a that's a really great question. And uh, you know, for early stage startups, um, there are so many things that can go into that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the growth rate of the company? What's the state of the product? What's the engagement like of their users? What's the caliber of the team? Do they have experience? kind of running startups in the in the past? Do they have exits in their past that they can point to to reassure investors? What's the total addressable market? Um, you know, is that market growing or declining? Um, what's the competition like? What are the barriers to entry? All of these different things go into evaluation and there's yeah. so little data points. It really is kind of art, probably more so than science. Um, That's a longer so discussion. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is a long discussion. Typically, at WeFunder, um, companies that are raising equity with us have had um, other professional investors, um, maybe angel investors that might have written them like a, a 50k check here or a 100k check there, and they might have, um, you know, already kind of put a, a valuation cap on the company. So we can kind of look to that. Um, if that hasn't happened, then we can work with the company, and ultimately, it's up to the company to say this is the value. I want to go with. Sometimes we, we want to push back a little or just get, give um, guidance that look in our experience, um, you, you know, it's uh, it's going to be tough um, to, yeah. for you to raise money on that valuation um, with a WeFunder network. Awesome. Well, yeah, like I said, this has been a ton of great information. I think that is a longer conversation, quite frankly, getting into getting into valuation. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's for the, the next episode. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> one of the one of the uh, programs that you guys are running is called Give One Thousand uh, Get One Thousand. I think it's Get One Thousand mm-hmm. Give One Thousand. I'm going to mix that up. But basically, mm-hmm. um, for the listeners of this show, if you you um, go through the link on the blog post that I'll, I'll link to with this podcast, you'll get a $1,000 discount on your fees mm-hmm. um, when you do your, your fundraising campaign on WeFunder. So if you're interested, uh, you've learned a little bit about equity crowdfunding with this podcast, you want to learn more, you can go on the site. And if you decide to launch a campaign, you can actually get a $1,000 discount. So I'll link that up to you in the show notes. Um, but John, I mean, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. There's been tons of great information. Um, we have to have you back. Lots of good stuff. I'd love to keep picking your brain, but um, we'd be here all day. So thank you for, <laughs> any, for coming on the show. Anytime, man. Yeah, it was a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Hope you got a ton of value out of today's episode. And in addition, if you are interested in looking more into WeFunder, we have a really special promotion that we're running where basically you'll get $1,000 off of the fees if you decide to do a WeFunder campaign and you successfully raise money. So if you're interested in that, you want free money, you know, who doesn't want that? Um, It's at no expense to you. You and I will also both be rewarded for this. I'm a part of their affiliate uh, program right now because they're trying to get more and more entrepreneurs on board and they recognize the value of my audience and crowdfunding. So for you selectively, if you're listening to this show right now, this is a killer opportunity. You can go to crowdcrux.com slash WeFunder. You can go there, go to that link and you will unlock this discount. So that's crowdcrux.com slash WeFunder. Once you start to actually get through the process and you find Finally submit all of your forms and you go live on WeFunder, um, that's really when the process begins. And I'd also, you know, I would love to hear from you because I think that from my own, you know, experience when it comes to marketing, driving traffic, getting pledges, a lot can be said for structuring an effective launch when it comes to an equity crowdfunding campaign. And, you know, I mentioned my book earlier, the um, Equity Crowdfunding Explained, available on Amazon, Audible, etc. But um, for those of you in the audience that don't want 
want to really read that. <laughs> like you, you just want someone to basically tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, how you can access these different resources and literally just use my knowledge at your disposal all the things that I've accumulated from writing this book, my knowledge about the different platforms, and um, just sort of get all that in one session. You can also check out some of my coaching programs. So with my coaching programs, we can do a one hour call. I can go really in depth, nitty gritty, understanding your project, what you're trying to accomplish, and also um, the strategy that you should be using to maximize your success. And literally every single person that has had a coaching call with me has said it, it's been amazing. You know, I really have that value of trying trying to under promise and over deliver. So I try to make these extremely effective and extremely helpful for you. So if you're interested in that, that link is crowdcrux.com slash coaching. But um, the main one here, if you if you are interested in WeFunder, I urge you go and check them out, read a bit of their literature, um, see the kind of statistics, they've raised a lot of money for different startups, um, when it comes to like technology, also brewery companies. So if, you, if you're falling into either of those categories, I know that technology is a little bit more difficult, uh, like software specifically to raise money for on Kickstarter, I would recommend checking out and looking into WeFunder. And if you want $1,000 off, that link is crowdcrux.com slash WeFunder. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Go and check out some of the other ones on this, on this podcast in the archives, and I will see you next time.